What's up guys? This is Nick, uh, here with the first video of my new how-to series. And today I'm going to show you how to make a projectile motion demonstration device much like this. Let's. Okay, so it's impossible for me to get all these long barrels completely in my shot, but the one that you just saw me fire is this one here on the left, that's the Mac Daddy. That's about a $60 projectile launcher. This one here in the middle, next to the can of cologne, we call the Mosquito. It's about a $30 one. And this one that's in pieces is the one that I'm going to show you how to build, and it is a $20 projectile launcher. So we're going to go ahead and get to it, and I have my friend James here. He's going to help me. All right. All right, so a projectile launcher is made up of only two basic components. You have your combustion chamber where your air fuel, where your air fuel mixture goes, and then you have your barrel where your projectile will sit and where it will be fired from. Now... We do have several joints and things to connect these together, but it's not all that complicated. Okay, We have a 2 inch diameter combustion chamber, and it's about 2.5-3 feet long maybe. And then we have a 2 inch to 2 inch coupler, and then we have a 2 inch to 3 quarter inch adapter that actually screws in. Then on the back, we have a 2 inch to 2 inch cap that screws in. Then we have our 3 quarter inch barrel that will be cemented here and it'll be brake barrel so you can take it off if you need to do any kind of maintenance or anything like that. And then we have our igniter and for our purposes we just used a replacement grill igniter and you can see there it sparks really well. It was $10 at Lowe's, but I've seen you can get them cheaper on Amazon if you're willing to wait a couple days. And so what I'm going to do now is go ahead and take this apart and we'll cement it together and then we'll be back to fire it. Okay, so step one before you can even cement actually is to go ahead and bore your hole that you'll put your igni igniter into. And uh, I've got my friend James here. He's going to start boring the hole. And um, we're just using a pocket knife. You can use almost any sharp object. He decided to go exactly halfway on the uh, two-foot pipe. And uh, this is a lot easier to do with a drill, but all we have on hand is a pocket knife. You can see he's just kind of rotating it back and forth there. And uh, this process can take anywhere from 3 minutes to 10 minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the video as he goes along. Okay, so here it is. The hole is complete, and we have our igniter here. And uh, one thing that's important is to make sure that it fits in there perfectly as you carve it out. So if you do end up using a drill bit, I'd use something slightly smaller than the actual diameter of your igniter so that you can go back and really get it perfect after you're done. And what James has done here is he's put duct tape around here. This helps to create a seal when you put it in there. And it fits in there nice and snug. And then go ahead and lift it up, James. And go ahead and click it and you can see down inside there it's sparking. Sparking pretty big too. All right, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to finish duct taping this. Just basically all we're just going to surround the whole thing in duct tape and make sure the uh, the igniter is good and secure. Feel free to put your own twist onto that thing because uh, there's all sorts of different techniques for securing this. But the main thing you want to make sure is that you don't get any blowback of fire from right here because that'll burn you, and being burned is generally not fun. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so you can see it's all taped up now, and it's in there good and tight. And uh, you can see we added a bit more tape than I showed in the high speed, but that's just to save some time. And uh, if I bring it over here to the side here, you can see down inside there where it sparks. It sparks pretty good. It doesn't show up real well on the video, but it looks really good in real life, I promise. You'll, you'll want a good uh, spark gap so that it'll really ignite that gas in your combustion chamber. Now, the next step is going to be to cement the uh, end pieces on either side 
Uh, we won't cement the barrel at this time. Uh, we're going to save ourselves a little time by starting to let it set while we cut the barrel. But uh, we have, I believe, a five foot piece of three quarter inch PVC here. And uh, we're going to cut off at least a foot of it, maybe two feet, and kind of shorten the barrel a little bit. And uh, we'll be back after that. Okay, so everything's been glued up here, and uh, it needs to sit for about two hours. And once it's all set, after these two hours, we'll come back and we'll duct tape pretty much every inch of the combustion chamber and every part of the lower part of the barrel. Now, you do want to kind of leave a weak spot in the back as a fail-safe. So that way, if it is going to break, it's going to break out the back and go behind you instead of in your face. Um, other than that, we're pretty much done. We'll check back here in about two hours, but it's going to be less than a second for you guys. Okay, so it did take about two hours for the PVC cement to dry. We came back and checked it, put everything together, made sure it was ready to go, got the gun all set up, and then we set up to fire it. So let's go ahead and fire it. Okay, now you've seen that this thing can actually fire, so hopefully you're ready to go out and build your own. Uh, if you need further instruction, you can watch this video again, of course, or you can check out my new blog site. It's Science Is, Science is misspelled S-I-E-N-C-E, -E, is, just I-S, dot blogspot dot com. Um, I'm actually trying to start a community-driven project thing where I'm going to make one of these videos every week. So go on ahead and visit that blog, and if you have any suggestions for some more how-to projects that I can do and uh, video and show you guys, then uh, either leave a comment on this video, shoot me a personal message on YouTube, or comment on the blog itself. And uh, I'll get the link to that blog in the description, and I'll try and put an annotation on the screen here too. Uh, thanks for watching, and be ready to see another video next week.